So there are tons of guitars that come up on Craigslist that just immediately are not my thing, but old guilds are completely my thing. So I found this guitar this morning, I sent an email, and so he was asking $700, that's fair, but I like getting a deal. And so I said, hey, can you do $600 and can I meet you this morning? And so the guy said, let's do it. So let's run to the bank, let's go pick up this guitar, and let's hear a badass uh, vintage guild. So this is a D25M, uh, and so it's a laminate back and sides, solid top, but made in Rhode Island. This is a good American-made guitar that most people don't know enough about. So let's go get it. I can do a decent job of uh, fixing that crack and also look in there and see what else I may see. I did I did put a lizard cam in it and of course a mirror mm -hmm. and the braces are good. Yeah, I mean these are they're really well built. Um might explain why it's 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 a heavy guitar group setting to be able to hear that. The number actually is still there. Yeah. I, I don't know what on earth scratched it up like that. Yeah. I mean it's not but it's there. And it matches the tag inside it. Yeah, I wonder what happened. Well, since then, a lot of things have happened to all of us. So I did something I've only ever done a handful of times just then. I, uh... I walked away. That guitar needed way too much work and um, it just was rough and I still I got it down to 600 but even then it was still had a had a top crack we hadn't seen in the pictures and she hadn't seen before and um, overall just had to walk away. It is critically important that you know when to walk away. So I drove about 35 minutes and I met with Terry. She does a lot of guitar repair. She's new to the area. She just moved down here. This is one of the guitars she picked up right before she moved and kind of didn't pay attention when she bought it. So this is a guitar that I was really excited to possibly own because I, I've owned one other of these. I've bought and sold a couple other guilds, but guilds from the 80s and 90s are really cool to me. Uh, but I opened up the case and it was so much rougher than the pictures had led on. Uh, I got it and it had a really bad nut. Uh, someone had replaced the nut and it wasn't terrible work, it just was not good work. So it was too narrow, so the strings were too tightly spaced on the fingerboard. And then also, it was too tall. So when you held down at the third fret, there was way too much action. Uh, there was still too much height. Uh, and so it was just everything about it. Within 10 seconds, I knew, maybe not 10 seconds, within 30 seconds, especially having the guitar in my lap, I knew this is not the guitar for me. Uh, and then I spotted a top crack. So there was a crack uh, from, so there's the sound hole and the fingerboard. There was a crack right on the treble side, right just on the other side of the E. And it was, it was loose. I kind of poked on it and I could see the two pieces of wood move. So everything about it, I knew immediately that I needed to pass on this guitar. Because I also, right now I don't have a reliable or great guitar repair person around here. Uh, if you do great guitar repairs, you know, within an hour of me in Virginia, please let me know. Uh, I know Chesapeake Repair, you guys are not far. You're like two and a half hours. Because I knew that this guitar was going to take way more repair than I knew, had planned on, because at $600, I'm cutting it pretty close. Like $600, I figured I would mostly make a video on it, make some money on a video. Not much, but make some money. And then I would sell it for $750, $800. I would pay for shipping. I'd pay for credit card fees, yada, yada, yada. I might uh, make 100 bucks on the guitar by the time it's done. But with the crack like that, it threw out pretty much any of the margin. Uh, you know, to get a repair on that. Uh, so the two things that it really needed in order to play at all or to be to the level that I would want to own it and sell it it would need a new nut, uh, like a bone nut that is properly cut, properly fit, uh, and makes the guitar play really well. And then it would also need to fix that crack. So both of those things are usually about 100 bucks to get a really good uh, bone nut. It's probably less, 
but I'll err on the side of caution and just say for most of us, it's going to cost you know seventy five to a hundred bucks to get a new to get a new nut cut and fit on a guitar. And then I'm selling a guitar that has a visible crack that has been repaired, which does affect the value. So all of that within thirty seconds, I knew that I needed to walk away. And so I think that's an informative. I've been waiting for one of these deals to happen. Honestly, this is a very rare thing for me to walk away from a deal. And what's interesting is she didn't even make a counter offer because she knew that my points were valid and that in order for me to buy it, I would have to be way lower in it. Like I, in order for that guitar to make sense for all the risk, I would want to be in it at 300 bucks or maybe 350 up to 400. But for me above that, it doesn't make sense. And so my business and my life involves lots of buying guitars and selling guitars. And so one of the tenets that I live my life by is that if it doesn't make dollars, it does not make sense. And some people that's frustrating to them and they think that that's not what guitars should be about. But this is my niche. Think about people that buy and sell vintage cars. I mean, this is, you're finding things that are on the brink of ruin. You're bringing them back to life and you're putting them in the hands of people that love them. So that's my role. And on this, there just was not enough. There was no way to make this deal uh, good. And I just, my, my spidey sense went off and my gut went off that I should not buy this guitar. A frequent sight that you'll see in the valley is a gas station like this. Uh, and there are gas stations, there are general stores, there are these old buildings that feel like they have really important cultural significance and historical significance to the valley, but they're just kind of sitting there wasting away. And I think it's a good example and a good metaphor of what's going on with this guild and why I just had to pass. Yes, there's historical significance and, and there's also really important cultural significance for this guitar, but there are some times that these things are just too far gone and they kind of become these monolithic, stoic figures of the community that just kind of stand around and waste away. And you wish that you could save them, and some are certainly worth saving, but unfortunately this uh, guild was just not it. When you're trying to figure out whether you should walk away from a deal, it's important that you measure all of the variables involved. I mean, one of them is the cultural significance of a guitar like this. So this guitar is just, it belongs in the hands of a singer songwriter from the seventies, like a folk, a filled to the brim folk singer that is writing songs that bring about justice and peace and love and kindness and help people experience the whole range of human emotions. And there is also this component in which this guitar is just rough and is probably a little too far gone. And so when you start weighing out, yes, it's culturally significant, but it has so much wear and so much stuff that needs to happen in order to keep it as a good guitar for another guitar player. On a weird side note, every time I see one of these gas stations, I dream of fixing them up and starting a business there. Maybe I will, maybe I'll uh, start a guitar company and run it out of just a badass, old, amazing, and important building. So thanks for watching this video. I'm Jeremy, I'm the Guitar Hunter. I'll see y'all later.